Welcome to Young and Successful, episode number two. And here I am with Ravi Frank from RaviFrank.com. Um, he's a 21-year-old man from Australia. I mean, from Israel. And he, yes, teaches men, <laughs> he teaches men and women how to start a business from scratch. His former partner is Matt Poshis, the yo- one of the youngest and highest paid internet entrepreneurs who made his first million at 18 years old. Do you have anything to add? That's pretty to much a add? good... Yeah, yeah just general fucking awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. All right, so that's Robbie Frank. Um, I'm glad to have you on the show, Robbie. Thank you. Um, so where to start? We've had a, an interview before. I talked to you. Unfortunately, it went to shit. But here we are again. At, at, at the interview, the recording. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's, I'm actually recording this time. Um, okay. I, I'm going to ask you some, a few questions just like that to start off the conversation. If you had, okay, I've been asked this question quite a bit. There's some people from my high school, from my friends, and they really want to start a business, but they have no idea where to start. They're just like, I want to start having recurrent income. I want to have a passive income coming in, but I don't know what to do, what to sell, what to look up to. What would you suggest to those people? Uh, the, the, the suggestion I give to anybody who wants to start his journey as, uh, as anything, uh, especially if you want to be an entrepreneur and make money you know, passively or just make a lot of money, uh, uh, it's either like read three, four hours a day or get a mentor. But if you're not doing either one of them, you're in Dude. deep shit. <laughs> <laughs> you're in deep shit. But like, you know, reading books, I get it, and getting a mentor. But like, oftentimes mentors are going to be expensive. Do you have anything to suggest if they want to find a mentor? Like, any yeah, recommendations yeah. to start getting mentors? Yeah, uh, money is uh, basically it's just in your head. Uh, it's just a number. Uh, money, you know, comes and goes. Uh, I had months that I was twenty thousand dollars in debt, and then the next month I make fifty thousand dollars. It it really doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, you're regarding mentors. Uh, these are actual people just like you and me. Uh, they simply went through the process that I'm describing and actually pulled through and uh, got big results. So when you're looking for a mentor, realize he's actually just a regular human being. Uh, and actually, if he sees that you're just like him, that you're actually like a cool guy who wants to be successful and you're just like he was, uh, there's no reason he w- wouldn't want to help you. Uh, yeah. But there's one caveat, you have to want it bad enough. Because yeah. uh, I get approached like about five times a day uh, by people who ask me to mentor them and you know at, that, at this point I always give them like the, the the pussy test I call it I go like hey man okay no problem uh, but I just want you to know that it's actually it's very expensive uh, it's it's a lot of commitment and it's a lot of money and but if you if you actually go with me I can promise you you'll make you have a business that generates a thousand dollars a day within like a few months mm-hmm. uh, mostly at this point people chicken out now, actually, it's not that expensive to work with me, but I do it just to, to, to check their commitment levels. Because yeah. the, worst, the worst offenders are people who tell me, oh, you'll teach me for free, and I'll give you like a share of the results. You'll, All sorts of bullshit like that. That's so stupid. That's so stupid. So, so when, you, you, when you're looking for a mentor, make sure that it's really important enough that you're willing to risk everything. Uh, because just in general, whether you believe karma or not, if you look at the history, you'll see that people who are willing to risk everything, they got big stuff, big rewards, and people who are not willing to risk, they usually get the short end of the stick. Yeah. Um, you also talk about books. Do you have any books to start, to suggest, at least to, in order to start making money, to start becoming an entrepreneur? Any books to look at? For me, I really liked the four hour work week. It was really eye opening in terms of entrepreneurship. Do you have anything else to suggest? You mean any particular books? Yeah, any particular books or maybe fields of study to to um to look into. 
um, if you uh, want to be an entrepreneur, read the books about uh, being an entrepreneur. Obviously, <laughs> if you want to be an entrepreneur and uh, online marketing, read books about online marketing. When when you uh, read books three hours a day, what happens is that your thinking uh, level gets elevated. Uh, now you might think that the difference between a guy like me who's pulling like sometimes twenty thousand dollars a month, working as little as ten hours a week, uh, is doing it because I'm like more talented. But it's not. It's like it's only because I think on a different bigger, level. I think better. Uh, and then you say, okay, so somebody like Donald Trump, who pulls like almost a billion dollars a year, he's better than me. No, he's not. He's just thinking at a higher level. He's thinking, he, he just thinks with a bit more zeros in his yeah, goal. Yeah, but also, not only that the, he thinks in a different level, but he has also the resources to make more money. I mean, it's a lot of people they expect starting with nothing and becoming a millionaire from from the day they start and then the next day they're millionaires. It's not like that either. Like you have to go yeah. through the motion. I mean, yeah, it's a, there's a it's learning a, curve at it's least. It's an ebb and flow process. So there's the outward manifestation and there's the inward manifestation. So what happens, uh, you need to start with either one. So let's say you want to start becoming a millionaire. You slowly, you can either raise your thinking level by reading a lot every day or getting a mentor. So if I don't have a mentor at that time, I read a lot. If I have a mentor, I stop reading. I just focus on my mentor. But either way, I make sure I elevate my thinking every single day. Mm -hmm. um, just like you work out, you should work out every day if you want to keep fit. You should read every day if you want your brain to think better. So what you do is you elevate your thinking process and uh, you begin to think at a higher level, which in turn manifests better external circumstances. But also, you want to do it from the outside in. So you start manifesting by force, higher uh, levels of uh, external circumstances. So you get the apartment that you can't afford. You get the car that you wanted, but it's not you can't really afford it. You leave your parents' uh, house. You, know, you, you go for the girls you want, but you're not sure you deserve them yet. So you go for the things that are out of your reach. And what happens is you go for the external stuff. Mm -hmm. And that, in turn, manifests the thinking processes. So it's a, it's, it's a process that sort of feeds itself. The outside feeds the inside, and the inside feeds the outside. And if one of them is not good enough, for example, I just moved to this uh, penthouse apartment, uh, but, and it's really expensive, and it's really beautiful. There's like a jacuzzi. There's you know, a lot of shit going on here. But for me... I, I, my standard is getting an apartment on the beach. So for some reason, I sort of copped out. I got a really pretty apartment, but I feel I can do even better. So I'm not challenging myself by getting mm -hmm. this one. So what happened, my, my internal dialogue actually got uh, handicapped. So I'm always keeping my external levels just a bit above what I can afford. Uh, and that way, I'm always on edge. No, that's but, but what, ha what happened, I, I got an apartment that's exactly what I can easily afford. So I can live in this apartment, make like a 90% uh, profit. So that means this apartment, the amount it costs me, at the end of the month, I get to keep 90% of the profit. This system of thinking, you, you named it something, inter internal and external. How do you call that? Being awesome. Being awesome is putting yourself into circumstances that force you to level up. I mean, I mean, for me it makes sense because I read a lot and I hang out with successful people every day. Mm -hmm. But for somebody who doesn't read a lot and doesn't hang out with successful people, that's not necessarily like, the right thing like to do. Like talking to a retard. It's like. How do you explain somebody that in order for your muscles to grow, you need to work out every day and eat healthy? Yeah. No, it's kind of obvious, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you don't apply resistance, how the fuck do you expect to grow? Right, it's growing stronger. A so what do you do? You read every day or you get a mentor that will elevate your thinking, which is like a muscle, so you're better equipped to hold... Uh, more bigger rewards because bigger rewards usually are attached to bigger risks, right. uh, perceived risks. 
Uh, so you're, you're capable of holding these ideas. Uh, that's by elevating your level of thinking every day. But on the other hand, you also need to elevate your external circumstances to support your self-esteem. Because mm -hmm. if your self-esteem doesn't follow or even doesn't lead where you want to go, uh, I mean, again, what happened, I moved to this apartment and in this apartment it doesn't cost me. Uh, it's, it's basically like paying for error at this point. Okay. Uh, so I'm not challenged. Mm -hmm. So I basically spend my days drooling. The last two days I just read a bit and sort of spend my days drooling. Uh, and I found out that I'm not focused. I'm not focused enough. Because you're not placed in a position where you had to focus. Is that yeah. it? Yeah. Really interesting. Because I'm already making like 10 times more than the average person. I can easily afford living here for all my life and, you know, all the most expensive stuff. But it's, it's not an effort. So what I'm doing right now, I'm moving to an apartment like three times more expensive. So now what happens if I don't uh, make a sale for... Uh, two weeks, I will lose money. Mm -hmm. So, so I'm always. It's not, you know. Maybe I can do even better, you know. Like maybe I can put put even more pressure. But the point is, as long as there is pressure, it's a bit like anti fragile. You, you know, like there's a point where you want to put yourself poison so that your body grows stronger. But if you put too much, then you'll die, and it's actually not good. So it's just like finding that balance of like pressuring yourself and testing your limits until you actually like force yourself to level up right also your, your video is not uh, activated yeah i think it's just gonna keep on crashing for some reason my mac is is turning to shit anyways i really liked um the video you put up on facebook and everybody should actually follow you on, on facebook i'm gonna put the link in the description you talk about McDonald and school. Do you remember exactly what you said? Could you could you tell it again? Yeah. The the analogy. The analogy exactly. Ah, um, I had a guy who I talked to, and he got three years at college for free. So I told him, "Don't don't take it." <laughs> and he said, "Why?" But it's free education. So I asked him, "Yeah, but if I offer you like three years subscription at McDonald's." Would you get it? And he says, of course not. And I said, but why? It's free food. <laughs> right. So what you're saying is that our educational system is completely screwed. It won't teach you how to become an entrepreneur and successful in life. That's what you're saying. I'm saying that you can't learn from somebody else how to do it. You have yeah. to do it yourself. Let's say someone wants to launch itself in business. What's... Mm -hmm. What is... What do you he has to do in order to start making money? What, is, what are the things you should look at in order to become an entrepreneur? Is it, is it making sales as soon as possible? Or w what do you recommend in order to start making money? Um, in, in order to start making money, you, you have to, first of all, um, on uh, have uh, something to offer that's that's obvious mm -hmm. yeah. you have to know exactly what sort of value you can give uh, but 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 mainly it's like the reason I stress thinking levels is because at this point I don't need um, I don't need my current business to make money I'm, I'm in a position where Whatever I do, I'm going to close the month with at least, at least, at least five, like 5K in earnings. Like, mm -hmm. regardless, doing the business, doing something else. Because you understand sales. That's just the amount I'm expecting. Mm -hmm. Not expecting like a spoiled brat, but expecting because I know what I'm worth. Right. Uh, and I'm talking about like tiny amounts of work because I think better. Mm -hmm. uh, most people are stuck at the employee level, so they think, you know, if I work eight, eight hours a day and I finish the day, then I finish the month with like two, three K. So that, that's what happens. And then you get a guy uh, at a 10 times higher level than me who's like a multimillionaire or a billionaire, 
you, you know, you can take that guy and within a month he'll start making tens of thousands. Right. That's really interesting. Also, last time on the last interview, you talked a lot about sales and how it's all perspective. Can you explore the subject uh, or at least explain it to me again? I thought it was really yeah. interesting and I believe people should understand this. So yeah, so the reason I, I emphasize uh, perception also is because that correlates with creating external circumstances. So when your external circumstances are enhanced, uh, the way people perceive you is enhanced. Now, you look at a person and you ask yourself, uh, what is success? So success, uh, like Dan Pena says, it's how much money you fucking make. You know, and people are <laughs> like, no, that's not the only measure. It's not the only measure, but it's the only measure people actually keep track of. Yeah, that's the only measure you can actually count, right? Yeah. So, so you want to be a person who makes a lot of money, that is being a person who's successful. But if you want to make a lot of money, and I, I always stress that to people when I just first uh, I w start working with them. I tell them, you want to make a lot of money? They say, yeah. I say, so realize that that means that people have to give you a lot of money. That's not money. That people look at it like, oh, I want to make $10,000 a month. And they think it just, just appears. It doesn't. It means the cumulative, the, the sum of money you got from people is ten thousand dollars that month probably more because of taxes mm -hmm. what the fuck can you <laughs> offer that people will give ten thousand dollars in total now right. the cool thing one person can give you ten thousand dollars or or a hundred people can give you a hundred dollars both are legitimate mm -hmm. Um, but my focus is on how do you create a situation where people give you an average of one, two, three thousand dollars, and then you just need three people to reach ten thousand dollars. That's a really cool thing to do. It's interesting, but like like you said, you really need to have uh, external circumstances that show that you are at this level, right? That you you have to put yourself on, almost on a pedestal in order for them to actually be ready to pay you money is that is that yeah but that that makes sense that makes total sense um do you have anything to recommend to young entrepreneurs anything you would like to tell people and like, what a specific like, uh, about success about success read like, read three hours a day or get a mentor but always be doing one or the other that's uh, it. It's a dichotomy for success. Um, if you'll do, I mean, I haven't met a single person who reads three hours a day. First of all, I barely met anybody who reads three hours a day, but I've never met a person who reads that much about success and is now already highly successful after just a few months. <laughs> right. Because, I mean, people, you know, they like to talk a lot, they like to bullshit, but, you know, I mean, I can already say that. You know, as Dan Pena says, like 90% of the cocksuckers watching this, they don't actually want to be successful. They just want to be entertained by the thoughts of being successful. Because mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I'm telling you, it's like you tell me, oh, hey, Robbie, I want to be like really muscular and fit and look good and be healthy. Okay, so eat a well, a well versed diet, you know, that consists of a lot of healthy things, sleep well, and work out every day. Done. It, it's a recipe. It's a, the <laughs> simplest recipe. So you want to be successful? Work hard. Exactly the same. Read a lot every day or get a mentor while uh, improving your external circumstances. But, or even doing just one or the other. But that's the recipe, basically. It's like, you know, you can get big by working out but not eating well. Mm -hmm. But you can't get big if you don't do either one. And if you do both, then it sort of enhances the effect by quadruple. <laughs> right. Um, do you have any quotes that? What's your favorite quote at the moment? Actually, do you have any quotes to you live yeah. by? Yeah. Yeah. My favorite hear. quote is uh, the road of access. The road of excess leads to the palace of wisdom. You'll never know uh, what is uh, enough until you know what is too much. Uh, so, so that's a quote I live by in everything I do. And it also sums up the way I started because I started just like everybody else, you know, making one, two grand a month. 
not really enjoying my life that much, uh, just being sort of like, uh, I was independent, but I was sort of a slave to my customer, so I wasn't really being independent. What did you do? Uh, I was uh, doing coaching, and like life coaching, health coaching, stuff like that. Okay. Uh, and then uh, when I got my first mentor, uh, what I did, I went all out. So I just got like a twenty thousand dollar loan. I moved to a hotel that cost like eight hundred dollars a night, uh, and I just said, okay, like fuck it, you know, if I if I'm not successful, I'm gonna be in big trouble. So what I did, I elevated my uh, thought process by getting a mentor, and I also elevated my external circumstances like to the max by getting the most like the most prestigious uh, external circumstances I could I couldn't afford. Um, and 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 you know just that that's what made the big jump so fast to uh, to success. It's uh, you know as Dan Pena calls it a quantum leap. That's right. Uh, and everybody can progress at their own pace. You know, like Arnold Schwarzenegger would work out like five six hours a day, five days a week, or six days a week at the gym. Mm -hmm. and, um, and there's actually a, a famous story. Where he he just sort of uh, had small cows, like really really small cows, and he wanted them to be bigger. So what happened? Uh, he his mentor told him like you need to lift one thousand pounds uh, of weight on your calves, and he says, "Come on, like I'm lifting right now two hundred. Like, are you kidding me?" And his mentor actually did it, and his mentor is like fifty years old. Uh, so he said, "Okay, so if he can do a thousand, then I can do five hundred. So he jumped from 200 to 500. Just and because then within of the two months, Just because of the psychology. And within two months, he was doing 1,000 as well. Wow. Impressive. All right. So, Robbie, where can we find you right now? On your website? I'm traveling the world. Uh, <laughs> traveling the uh, world. You were in Lithuania recently, right? Uh, Lithuania, Amsterdam, back in Israel, in a few weeks is Singapore, and then uh, Gothard Castle in Scotland. Wow. So yeah, a lot of uh, shit, and then you know, it constantly changes, so a friend of mine just called me up, and he's like, hey dude, uh, I have like a week off, uh, you want to maybe go to Greece? I'm like, yeah, sure, let's go to Greece. <laughs> and um, your, your posts on Facebook are really entertaining, I'm going to post your profile and in the description if you really want to. Um, yeah, that's the best recommendation. Just follow me on Facebook. Yeah, and, uh, <laughs> guys, follow him on Facebook. He has great advice. Also, he has a YouTube channel. And if not, you can register to The Good Life right now. You have a new program or something on your website. Basically, w what I did, I sort of took a step back with uh, programs right now, with courses. Mm -hmm. And I just focused on one-on-one -on -one training with uh, clients. So I help clients in 60 days build a business that will make them about a thousand dollars per sale uh, within just two short months uh, and the idea was working one-on-one -on -one with people because I just started really getting disgusted by the whole industry of uh, you know people selling lectures right. or as then says putting a getting rich by putting assets on seats um, what do you mean putting assets on seats putting asses on seats. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, sorry. Somebody's ass and putting mm. it on seats. And tell them, listen, 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 listen. Yeah, and not actually do it with me. Right. Uh, so, yeah, so today I'm only working with clients one-on-one -on -one privately and people are having raving results. I actually had one guy make $700 in his first two days. Wow, that's... Uh, so that was a that's really cool thing. That's really impressive. So you can find that on RobbieFrank.com? No, just contact me on Facebook. <laughs> contact him on Facebook, guys. <laughs> contact him on Facebook. Believe me, he's worth it. Um, thank you very much for being on an interview, Robbie. I hope yeah, you enjoyed sure. it. Thank sure, you. Man. <laughs>